Well, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to go over on how I keg my kombucha. I make my kombucha six gallons at a time using the batch method. Uh, I find the consistency is much better doing it that way than the continuous brew method. I started out when I did kombucha making uh, two gallons using these glass containers here. And uh, I've over the time, I've expanded that to about six gallons at a time. We're going to be kegging it in a five gallon keg. Um, I'm using the ball uh, kegs, uh, just like you do for a uh, beer, but um, we put kombucha in ours. So what I'll be doing is I'll show you step by step on how I move the kombucha from here, and I'll brew more tea, and I'll use a gallon of this as my starter. And then I'll use the rest of this, and I do not do a second ferment outside of the keg itself. We'll be making Asian pear, uh, Asian ginger pear actually. Uh, I've been making that batch uh, on and off for the last couple months, and it's one of our favorites. Um, I use uh, these bags, and I cut up the pears, ginger, cinnamon, and it all goes into this bag, and it's clamped, and this bag will go into the keg itself. So instead of uh, mixing the uh, fruit directly into the keg where it could clog up the keg, I'll go ahead and uh, put it in those bags. Also seems like it gives it a better flavor. I will pre-carbonate it using a carbonation stone on the end of my lid here. And what I'll do is I will um, put the CO2 onto the tank after I put all the ingredients into the keg and then I will um, up the pressure to about 30 to 32 PSI and then I will uh, force the air out of the remainder of the keg. I have a little head space at the top and then um, I'll force carb through this little uh, stone here. What I'll do then is I will let it sit for 24 hours before I'll start uh, consuming the uh, kombucha. Okay my next step here is I'm making the tea for the next batch of um, kombucha. I start off with a pot full of water here and what I do is I get the temperature about 196 to 198 degrees to steep the tea. I also will be adding the sugar and dissolving it into the hot uh, water before I add the tea. I like to steep the uh, sugar water and tea together to make a real big concentrate and then what I'll do from that is I will mix it into the uh, five gallon container before separating it out into um, the uh, glass containers. All right, uh, my kombucha with the SCOBY will sit roughly nine days um, um, before I do the first taste test. Seven to nine days is where I start um, tasting the kombucha and see if it's ready. Currently right now, five gallons of kombucha in our household is only lasting roughly a week and a half before we consume it all. I use uh, five cups of sugar for the five gallons of tea I'm going to be making. All right, here's my tea. I'm going to add that to the hot water now, the hot sugar water. And I will mix that around and I will cover it and I will steep it for about an hour. Here's the keg I'll be using. Um, it's your standard uh, ball. It's a five uh, gallon uh, keg. Uh, my system I got online and I'm using, it's by, made by Keg Co. I sanitized the keg already. I just got done doing that. I like to use star sand and I make five gallons at a time. And I store those five extra five gallons because they're good for uh, at least, I, I save it for about two weeks, sealed in uh, five gallon food grade containers. Uh, as long as it makes suds, it's working. So a lot of people get worried about, well, do I have to get the suds out? I know you can't see the suds in there, probably, but there are suds inside this uh, keg right now. You can mix your uh, kombucha right into it. It doesn't change the taste, and it doesn't hurt the kombucha. You do not have to make sure the suds are gone before you use it. When I empty the keg out and I clean it, I like to use... Uh, PBW. Hey, I'm preparing to uh, 
get the tea from the take the scoby out and I will uh, go ahead and pour this tea into a five gallon food safe container before I actually pour it into the cake. I already separated out 12 cups of starter and I like to use about four cups per um, glass container for my starter. It's a little bit more than the recommended one cup per gallon but I like it because it gives a good jump start and I'm averaging anywhere from seven to nine days turnaround time to uh, make five gallons of kombucha. I will have... All right. So I've started to empty the uh, containers into the five gallon bucket. This is what's left at the bottom I was telling you about earlier. This is what I'll clean the container with before I do my next batch in it. I like to get rid of uh, the dead yeast. I strain it through a uh, strainer so we can not catch all the yeast and all the other debris that's in the, in the SCOBY. I'll do a container here, like I said earlier, I'll use a little vinegar in it. Um, I also will coat my hands in vinegar, try to keep things clean before I handle the SCOBY. What you want to do is you want to try not to get as much non-contaminated stuff on your scope and that way you'll keep any bacteria or molds off it so you don't grow anything. This stuff on is the yeast that you'll see in here. I don't clean it off. If it comes out, it comes out. And of course, I pour it straight in through the filter like this, what I did with the previous containers. And this is what I usually have left. And I'll use that. Um, to do a test of uh, different flavors. And now I'll clean up the containers and I uh, will show you how we put it in the cake. Okay, I've cleaned the containers and dried them. I like to use a little bit of vinegar in them just to sterilize them. What I like to do is I'll take them and I will just coat the jars with vinegar. Alright, so I've dumped them out in the excess vinegar. I've already separated, as I said earlier, this is the starter I took right off uh, from one of the uh, containers. I've got 12 cups. I like to use roughly four. They're marked, so I'll go ahead and pour two two from this one into each one and then two from the others into it. Let's do that first. So basically I just evened it out. That'll be my starter. The next thing I'm gonna do now is this, the tea has been steeping for at least an hour. And now I gotta get the uh, loose leaves out. So I use a stain strainer that I used before after I cleaned it. And what I like to do is since it is hot and you can't mix the hot, you don't wanna put a hot tea with your scoby, you'll kill it. So what I do is I'll take, cause I use bottled water for my uh, tea. I go ahead and I pour some of that already about a gallon and a half to two gallons of water into uh, the uh, five gallon bucket already. Then I'll put the strainer in. And this is my sugar and tea concentrate. And that's basically it. You've got your tea in here. That will help cool it down. 
Okay. Now that I have the tea mixed in with some water, I double want to double check the thermometer reading and make sure it's not too hot. I like to make sure it's around 78, 80 degrees. The room temperature is like 76 in here. So it could be a little bit warm. And as you can see, it's about 80 degrees. And that's plenty safe. It won't hurt the SCOBY. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this bucket and I don't do exact measurements here. I mean, I already know how much I made of this concert. Containers filled up with the sugar tea solution, uh, water to fill up to the line I want to stop at, and now I'm going to put the scopies back in. Again, there is a right side and a wrong side to the scoby. This side is the downside. Of course, this side is the nice clean side, that is the upside. So I'll just go ahead and put it in. I usually make sure it's going to stay up. Sometimes they'll sink, that's normal. Scobies are put back in the containers and I have the coffee filters on top. You need to make sure you, whatever you put on top is you're going to have air because it needs airflow. And I also keep it in a room on a shelf that has lots of airflow out of direct sunlight. Okay, we're going to pour the um, kombucha into the keg. I use a funnel and I have a screen on that funnel just in case there's any large stuff that got missed in the first screening uh, will be caught in here. All right, we've got the pears and everything into the bag. So we'll go ahead and already put one bag in, and we're going to put the other bag in. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put the kombucha in using the funnel. into the keg and get ready to put the lid on. As I said earlier in, my, in the video, I, I use a um, carbonation stone. The way this works is you have your in and your out, and then this one here, when you hook up the uh, CO2 to it, it will force the CO2 through this fine stone and help get more bubbles into the uh, system. So I'll go ahead and I'll drop that in. This has already been sanitized. And I push it in past the bags so it's at the bottom. Put the lid on and lock it in place. All right, so we're getting ready to put the CO2 into the keg. This is the kegerator set up here for the kombucha, and we also do a kefir. Um, like I said, this is a keg go uh, setup I got on uh, Amazon. I've already preset my pressure to 32 PSI, and this is the CO2. Normally, when I operate it, it will operate it on the inside, but I'm going to uh, force CO2 into this uh, solution. So what I do is I'll use that special lid that has that input that goes down to the stone. All right, so I'll go ahead and connect that. All right, my line is open, and I hear it pressurizing now. As it's pressurizing, there's still a little headspace of air. I want to get the air out. So what I'll do is I'll vent the air out. There's not a lot of air in there because there's very little space left at the top. But you want to get the air out. That helps so you don't have any air in there. You're replacing it all with CO2 and you get less oxidation. Okay. Well, this is what pretty much concludes our video of how, how I do our kombucha on tap. Uh, it definitely is simpler to do that than bottling. Um, I really, we really enjoy having it on tap. We have two taps, like I said just a moment ago. We have kefir and kombucha. We change the flavors uh, periodically, uh, but it seems to be our, our, our flavor that we like the most. Um, tomorrow, I will, uh, it'll be ready to uh, drink. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, ask in the comments below.